face, it is a sea of red today. Red everywhere. Bonds are the only thing catching a bid. Uh, gold's pressing lows. So if we really continue to accelerate in the stock market, it's possible that this still will be the peak in yield and we get this, uh, and then we get this from here. So uh, bonds look to be where money is going. Of course, it's going to the dollar. Dollar has not yet made new highs. We're still about uh, 60 pips away. Kind of looks like a layup here. Uh, tempted to, you know, uh, it's also possible that the high is here, just like bonds intact, and we put in t some type of high. We know under this level, the dollar is heading lower. So it might be worth a shot, um, actually, because, you know, the pound's leading it to the downside. Euro pound, something we've been talking about for a long time, looking pretty good. And I even talked about, I, I did a webinar yesterday that uh, Euro pound can be good, not just, uh, not because Euro is going to be in an uptrend, but because of problems with Brexit and cable. So um, real nice candle here. Uh, I think that we're about to enter an acceleration phase here. I, I know I sound like a broken record, but I've been saying it for months that this pattern in Euro pound looks incomplete. We've had two here and very possible we're heading up for a three. And it could be more about cable weakness than about uh, Euro strength. A stock market uh, actually that little one two day rally in the S&P's almost got the 618 back here. Right here on the four hour, just missed it. Actually on this candle, I thought there was a chance that we'd get a C. So we'll see what happens here. Uh, we're actually under the two week off number now at 2, 2798. Um, this looks like a somewhat of a support zone. They better turn it here. We're in for some acceleration. But if you recall yesterday with Blake, uh, when he got back, I said, I think this was important last week. And uh, evidence continues to pile on that this could turn into a significant sell-off. Uh, Euro did the whole round trip, everyone, on the triangle, right? So great call by Steve. Uh, when it looked like we were breaking out, that's why I favored shorts and cable, although I didn't stay with it. It was a home run ball. And here we are back at the bottom of the triangle. So are we going to finally get a resolution with the close? That's why you, have, you never know how a candle is going to close until it closes, right? So on the four-hour candle, we never closed above it. On this four-hour candle, so far, we haven't closed beneath it. So the triangle continues, compression continues to build. But as you can see, mainly uh, uh, a sea of red. I think the dollar strength is part of it, and that's happening with uh, uh, tariff talk. Canada, uh, Martin was uh, tweeting me yesterday asking about a three drive, and yeah, this is pretty classic in Canada down here. So if the dollar continues, we, you know, we could start coming out of here in Canada. I know long term, uh, the guys have liked it here. So perhaps uh, this was it yesterday, and this is just a little ABC, and now we're on our way to new highs. So uh, that's pretty much uh, uh, what I'm seeing here today. Don't chase anything. I believe it's BOE day. So um, I'm sure I'm going to get some uh, input. Blake is here. Andre is going to be here with us. So um, that's going to be great to see Andre's charts and what ha some harmonic patterns are pointing to. And then I have Adam Button here uh, for an interview. Adam, usually at the beginning of the month when we get together, talks about the seasonal influences and uh, 
uh, the way markets historically have performed during different months. So we'll get his outlook for August. You know, at this time, I'd like to welcome all our investing.com viewers and invite them to take a trial here. Uh, I wire back refunds if you don't think 10 days, uh, 10 cents a day, it was worth it. I think uh, $10 a day would be a, a value with this team that we have here. Some people are gracious and kind enough to call us the dream team. We may be a dream team for our subscribers, but we're a nightmare for our competitors. So here you go. And then once you get there and you subscribe, you're going to have the dashboard, all the different types of analysis, active patterns in play, and active tickers. Uh, you're also going to have access to the chat room. Okay. So you could have your own Twitter feed. Right. There's Grega. S&P may also see 2760. Okay, we're almost there. Nice call by Grega. And then you get all the short-term, long-term, different time frame charts and different analysis. Uh, here's an update by Blake on Euro. And you can see we're break. He's showing the triangle too. We're right there. So you have uh, you have guys working for you almost around the clock. Uh, you don't have to sit at your desk uh, like I do. At least during uh, phase, you could go about your business, and you're going to get any on your Android or your Apple phone. You're going to get uh, all the updates pushed, all the alerts pushed to you. And also, if you're looking for, uh, I talked to Justin this week, and he told me about 30% of the people he works with have more than one account for different reasons. Uh, the major reason is to the FIFO, first in, first out. That affects your trading. You want to set up a duplicate account. You just get a, get a hold of uh, Trent and Blake. So here's our reimbursement program. If you're overseas, they'll find you a broker that'll pay for, or rebates will help you pay for your subs subscription here. And Forest Park's a place to go. And here's how you get a hold of them right here. Everyone see this? Write it down. Brokers at forexanalytics.com. And they'll give you a free consult. And if they, you know, you're with uh, someone that's good, they're going to tell you that too. And uh, just because they refer you to a broker doesn't mean that you have any more costs. In fact, they're going to save you money because of the volume that they do with particular brokers. Uh, it's really kind of the uh, economy of scale. So give these guys a call, set up an account, switch accounts, add an additional account. And we'll see what happens if we get follow through in the market here but pretty negative action. Uh, I've targets all the way down here. So, you know, you really haven't missed it. If, if this is it and we're gonna get something like this, which I know some of the bears are looking for, it would be like saying, oh, you know what, I'm late. I'm not gonna do it. And then three days later you have this. So I'm not sure if this is gonna be the type of collapse that we get or it's going to be more in time. But definitely we're back, especially once we start taking out, uh, and we are back beneath this 2800 level. The two week off number was holding all week till today. It was uh, 27, it's this day, this week right here, 2798. So earlier in the week, If you don't think off numbers have value coming into the week, you knew you had uh, an off number of 2798. So you could have played that number for the long, 
low of the week, 27.97. And now it looks like we're going to take it out. Um, maybe we'll get some type of rally back here, but I think these highs uh, should be safe unless it's just an ABC. So uh, don't chase the market, but if you get a recovery here, maybe back to 808 now, something like that, 804. Uh, you might want to consider raising cash in your IRA, uh, putting on some hedges for your stock portfolio, and even specking on the short side. Any questions on anything I've covered here today or any particular instrument? It's really, it's Blake and me and then Andre that I could help you with. Gold hasn't quite made a new low. Um, I still think yen has another shot to the upside. This could save the market for a rally here, kind of looking like ABC. See, uh, we're not quite back to the breakout, but I remember before we had the big break from 1320 up here, this is exactly where people wanted to buy it, okay? People, when it was up here, uh, traders were saying, well, I hope I get a pullback to 11 and a half. So it overshot it. I missed the long side because of the BOJ. I was looking to buy a third drive that never manifested. Uh, so we have this first rally out. I don't think this rally, this high is going to stand. It was had a lot of momentum. Uh, I'm not saying that we're going to take these highs out, but I think we should at least challenge these highs one more time unless we start closing back under 111 because 111 is where it started to turn pretty good. Uh, that's a great insight. That's a great insight, and that's what I would begin to uh, look for especially if the dollar move continues. So Martin, that's a great insight. So you ask yourself, and the chart still doesn't look good, you know, it's down $1.87, so it's having some impact. We haven't quite made a new low. I think they have to gun for these stops, but that's gonna be uh, very important um, if, the dollar continues and the gold starts showing some relative strength, that would be a market message in my view. I still think the wash is going to happen here. I don't think they're going to let the longs stand here at 12.11, take them out. Just a simple measured move, kind of like between 36 and and 2016 is going to take you to 1204. Maybe even they go for the freak out under the big round number of 1200. But uh, I'm not seeing anything in uh, the shares. It's going to be interesting to see if they start to have a, have some better days. But here's some of the ETFs. These are the bluest of blue, GDX. New low, but diverging. Okay. These are juniors, new lows but diverging, and nugget, new lows and diverging. So you're you're getting divergence, but it still hasn't done anything right. I still think you want to see some lift in the gold shares before uh, attempting longs in the gold. And in fact, uh, silver is acting better, but the silver shares certainly are not. Uh, they've gotten creamed in the last week or so, you know, silver has been headed down for a long time, but take a look at some of these dailies here. Here's Coeur d'Alene. So it was holding, holding, holding. Uh, now we're making new lows. Here's your weekly, kind of an ugly weekly chart. Could be headed for 78.6, that's 270. That's another 30 cents away. Coeur d'Alene really got hammered too. In the last week or so, just sitting here at support. Um, if silver goes to 14 eventually after any bear market rally, I think that quarter de lane will be available under five bucks. So uh, long term, and I was thinking more towards October, uh, perhaps we get some type of bear market rally. I talked to Jim Welsh, actually, he's looking for maybe even 1300. I have a hard time seeing more than 1280. Uh, if we do get a low, but that would be one heck of a trade. I just don't see anything there yet, except that it's cheap and that there are some 
divergences developing both in the metal and the shares in the gold shares. Well, but will rise after interest rates. Oh, okay, on the pound. Okay. All right. So, how are you, Blake? Are you, you get some rest and catch up a little bit. Yeah, I'm catching up a little bit. I'm still, uh, I'm still a little, a little tired. I mean, it, you know, you, you know how it is, Dale. For us that live on the West Coast, it never gets uh, easy <laughs> to getting up as early as we do. But, uh, but, but, you know, I, I am a little bit more rested than I was yesterday. How are you doing today? Pretty good, bro. Um, you know, so uh, we talked about a few things that are happening here. Um, do you think this is uh, the size of day in the S and P's? I you mean, know, coming in sharply I, lower here. Uh, well, well, first of all, I do think that we are at really key support for the S and P. So I'll uh, I'll take you over to the S and P okay. right now. So this is the 1270 level, and the reason why this is such a big deal, and I actually have an alarm set for for this particular level, is that the 2790 is support. Now, I'm going to just point out really quick, and let me go ahead and um, grab my pen here. So you can see we hit an 88% retracement, okay? We And that, that's from the bigger move that started right. way, way over here. And yeah. we also hit 161% extension of this move here. Uh, so that confluence nice. turned us lower last week, you know, and we've yeah. been kind of moving lower. Now, um, at this point, uh, let me, I thought I had the right pen color, but I obviously I'm going colorblind right now. So let me grab a green pen and let me grab, let me draw. Okay. So now you have this head, shoulder, shoulder, and we are in a neckline. So, um, you know, is this a pretty key day for the S and P? Yeah, it is. I think it is. Um, you know, we, we may hold here before dropping, but really it's it's 27.90, and you know we break through that, and support's going to crack. And, and I'll tell you, the markets don't look good. We we talked about this yesterday. We talked about you know the the Nasdaq, um, you know, really underperforming here. Let me get rid of this. Yeah, and we talked know. about that there was no uh, flight to safety anywhere. Uh, not gold, not bonds. Now the bonds are catching a little bit today, but there was nothing to buy except cash, no, except yeah. cash and and the yeah. dollar. And yeah. and I and, and I and I I, I pointed out um, a, a chart yesterday uh, on the uh, U.S. dollar Canadian. I, I actually tweeted it. I said, you know, the U.S. dollar Canadian is approaching. You know, key support at 129.50. Uh, I'm I'm long, and, and I'm long from near here. I'm I'm I've, I've been buying a little cheaper. Um, like yesterday, I picked some up at like 130, and and I sold it this morning at 130.30. Uh, but I, I I'm I'm hoping for another move down to 129.50 just to, you know. Uh, yeah. Get that one last push, but as you pointed out, you know, your three drive. We got one, two, three. I guess you could, you know, call yeah, it three. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, here we are, you know, challenging the the downtrend line, and and you know, the the dollar Canadian may be ready to go. I mean, I'm 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 locked and loaded. I'm already long. I, I just was wanting to get long a little bit more, and I think if we get above uh, thirty and a one, half, one thirty and a half, so which would yeah. be this this level right here. Yeah. Um. You know, I'm gonna have to you know chase it a little higher as we as we make our way up to 131 132 is what I think. Um. But you know, I, I've already been preparing myself long dollars, and I'm long the U.S. dollar Mexican peso. As everybody knows, I I bought it here at uh, at, at 18.55 on Friday. On and, vacation. A vacation trade. Uh, it was a vacation trade. I got limited, and just just before I met the guys, and 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 by the way, if if you guys haven't seen this picture, let me see really quick. Um, uh, you and the guys in New York. Yeah. So it, for those of you that don't know, let me see here. Um, let me grab. Uh, I have it from yesterday. So yeah, here here's um. This is uh, us in New York City um, uh, last Friday. So uh, this right here is uh, in our in our chat room. This is JT. That's JT, and this right here is Matt. 
and that's Chi. And this is Jeff, uh, spelled with a G. That's Fernando, and that's me. Um, and we were in uh, we were at the Gingerman uh, in 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 New York City uh, on Friday, and and that morning uh, or that day, I got limited into U.S. dollar Mexican peso at 1855, and I think uh, I think uh, Jeff picked up some, she picked up some. I'm not too sure about JD. Uh, and Fernando um, is uh, is uh, he's he can't he can't really participate as much in our chat room uh, now because he can't uh, he's he's the head of a, a client or a FX client FX retail FX at BNP Parabas and so he uh, just got that job like six months ago so he. Um, he, his his activity in the chat room is usually in the evenings and 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 very limited. He can't log in from his firm anymore. So, uh, but anyway, uh, that's where I, that's where I picked up the uh, the U.S. dollar Mexican peso. And I've been waiting to actually add to that long, um, but uh, uh, I am looking to have any. Uh, you know, the move above 1880 is where, where it gets really bullish. So, it, in my opinion, if you if you see something like this, you know, here, that's when that's when uh, the market gets really bullish is above 1880. And so, um, I you know, I've I've obviously been uh, a little ahead of the move, at least trying to get a little ahead of the move, and 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 uh, you know, before I I, I start really. Um, you know, getting aggressively long, but that's coming out of a, that's coming out of a real big, you know, uh, completion of a, of, of a, a Gartley pattern uh, pulled back to, um, to major confluence here. And so that's, that's what's, um, you know, provoking me to get long. Now, uh, I just got a question from Anna and Anna says, do you have any advice for those who are new in the market? And I, and I do uh, uh, some, some really good advice. Now, first and foremost, I, tend to try to and myself and and people that have been in the markets for like you know I've, I've been trading these markets since 1990 I started as a trader in 1996 so it's 22 years you know almost 23 years trading I've been in the business uh, you know for 24 almost 25 years so um, yeah and like Dale you know I've, I've learned a thing or two along the way and one of the things that uh, that that for me which was really important to understand is I, as a as as somebody who's who's rather seasoned in, in trading, I can get ahead of a move, um, but I really don't get aggressive until I'm I can confirm that a move is on its way. So, um, and 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 which which this is a pretty good example, like the U.S. dollar Mexican peso. I know. I was getting ahead of the move, so I'm not as aggressive as I want to be because it's counter trend. But I know for me, uh, if we break above 1880, the move between 1880 and 19 and 1920, somewhere like the the length of this 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 uh, this you know arrow that you see here, this move uh, or this distance between here and here should be a fairly easy game. Okay, so as a beginning trader between here and here, this is what you you probably want to be shooting for, rather than trying to anticipate a move, because when when I anticipate a move, um, I'm not always right. I'm I'm definitely not always right, and, and and because I'm 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 trying to buck a trend, I'm trying to get ahead of um, some you know macro event that might be more of a market mover, and um, and I'm just really more unsure of the uh, the potential. But um, uh, but now you know here you know that I know that if we get above 1880, that that the the move between 1880 and 19 1920 should be fairly easy. Those are the trades that you as a as a as a beginning trader should be focused on, not not what I do. Or what some of us that are are more seen, you know, have been doing this a little bit longer, try to get in front of the markets um, ahead of a turn. So, uh, you know, go for the sure trades or the trades that you feel really confident about. And I think if you limit yourself to those really confident trades, you you may find less positions to take, 
but the one the the ones that you take should be more quality, and I think that'll help you quite a bit. Um, it because it, it's a little it, it it's it it is a little um, how should I say, Dale? Uh, I, I guess it's a, it's it's probably a little bit. Uh, I don't want to say deceiving when you follow, you know, somebody like myself or somebody who's been in the markets a, a, a little bit longer. It's not necessarily deceiving, but but the way that we trade around these, you know, turns are going to be, you know, a little bit more gingerly, a little bit more carefully. And if you don't understand that concept, then and um, then then it could be a little tougher. And it's you know, if you're using forex analytics, for example, yesterday I, I closed out uh, a gold uh, short. Or a gold, gold long, excuse me, that I had uh, on here for a while, and um, and and you know it, it it didn't work out the way I wanted, but I got a little bit of it. But then I you know put in a long U.S. dollar Mexican peso when we were trading at eighteen sixty, eighteen sixty two, because you know I'd mentioned to you guys yesterday that's you know the, these are the levels that I wanted to be long, so it it it, it it's already starting to make its way up there already but you know if you would have watched that you you might have gone okay well I'm gonna go ahead and, and get into a trade with uh, with Blake and you might have done really well but how about if it would have turned on you and it, which is it's, it's entirely possible so you know you should use like these these um, these active patterns in play more as a a, uh, a guide not necessarily to get long or get short, but a guide to say, okay, hey, look, Blake is is bullish. What, uh, why is he bullish? Well, you know, he's bullish because there's a confluence of supports. Then you go over to U.S. dollar Mexican peso and you say, okay, well, where's what 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 is he writing here, or what's the analysis? Uh, oh, Blake says uh, we have found major confluence of support at the 78% retracement, 161% extension, the broken long-term trendline support, and the daily RSI is divergent, which is setting up for a bounce. Great. Okay, so Blake's bias is long. That doesn't necessarily mean I want to get long right at that moment in time, but I know that you know, looking at my charts, that if we get above 1880, that should really clear a lot of resistance levels and give us that that extra boost to feel that much more confident. So I think you, you have to you have to be able to use um, the information that we provide you, but also um, you know you, you have to also complement it with your own analysis to to figure out where the, those right prices are uh, that you want to get in the market. But um, uh, hold on, Trump administration uh, proposes easing auto emission rules. Okay, that's not a big deal. That has nothing to do with trade. I thought it might have something to do with trade, um, and it doesn't. So so anyway, and I hope that helps you out. Now, uh, Joe, Joey says, hey, nice, Mr. Blake, chin fuzz still there, laugh out loud. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that's pretty funny. Um, uh, oh, your old company you... shut down. Uh, I knew they couldn't make it without you, Blake. Yeah, you know, uh, here, hold on, let me, so, <laughs> yeah, they, they are, they're, they're not shutting down, per, well, they are shutting down, but they, they, got, they got bought by Ally Financial. And Ally is just uh, shutting down the analysis part of it, but they're uh, of of Wise Street. But they're what Ally wanted, and I know I know what they wanted. They wanted the the flow. They wanted to get everybody converted over to accounts over at Ally Financial to get everybody trading with them, and then get you know, and then then you know, because th that's their core business. Their core business is not analysis. Ally Financial wants the 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 order flow as a bank you know, asset but, collectors yeah they are asset collectors that's exactly it so yeah wise trade is shutting its doors and uh, after it's it's an end of an era because um, it's been 17 years man long long time and I was with them for a 15 years of it you know um, gone through three four acquisitions um, before I left the company so uh, it's it's uh, it's it's a little sad. Um, uh, for me, but at the same time, it's, oh, wait, we have some news coming out. Shoot. Uh, weekly unemployment claims should be out in one second. So here, stand by. Here, we're, we're looking for 220,000. This is Bloomberg, guys, if you guys don't, you know, I'm watching this number right here, 218. So it's a, it's it's in line, basically. Continuing claims yeah, is basically in line. It's not going to move the market at all. Uh, I'd be surprised if it did. So, 
you can see how fast I get the news um, using uh, Bloomberg terminal versus, you know, you guys are probably looking on Twitter and seeing it, you know, a few seconds, 10, 15 seconds behind me. And the, if, if you, if you trade via, via news or you're looking for news events, it's, um, it's why it, you know, populates faster if you have a Bloomberg uh, symbol. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Ziggy said, um, Blake started trading when he was wearing diapers. Now Dale trades wearing diapers. Laugh out loud. Now that, now that's that Dale, that, that hurts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you tell, him tell, that, tell him he, he tell him to piss off. You can <laughs> no, no. You're partially right. It's a colostomy bag, though. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I am in my <laughs> latter 40s here. I, I mean, I may not look like it, but I, I am. I've, I've, I've uh, you know, I'm, I'm half Chinese. So I'm, you know, maybe that's why. I've, you know, I, yeah, I, they I look younger for longer. I, I, you know, my mom doesn't even have wrinkles. So you know, look at that. Wow. Uh, you know, yeah. I mean, that's just kind of, um, uh, yeah, Jason said, Blake, thoughts on uh, Wall Street shutting down? I know you've moved on, but that's where I listened to you for years. And yeah, a lot and a lot of you guys and gals have listened to me on the Wise Trade webinars, and that's how you, you, you found me. And it is a, it is a, um, uh, it is a sad uh, event for me, I, I think. So, anyway, hey guys, I know Andre is going to be here in a little bit, and and so what I'd like to do really quick is go over you know some of the analysis of these majors, so you know what we're dealing with, and you know what I'll be back in about. five, Blake. Okay, sounds good, Dale. All right, so the euro dollar, we are at we are testing uh, triangle support. Actually, the reason you're probably wondering, well, you know, the cable has sold off, or if you look at the dollar index, you're like, oh, the dollar index is rallying, why isn't the euro breaking down? Well, I think a lot of that is because the euro pound, I mean, if you're looking at the euro pound, the euro pound's bouncing uh, because the cable's selling off, so it's gonna support the euro a little bit here. Um, I do believe that the euro is at risk of, of breaking lower. You, you, you guys also have to understand from a macro point of view, the euro, there's, there's nothing good happening in Europe, I mean, Growth is not is not extending like it is here in North America. The, the 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 debt that a lot of these banks are carrying are higher than levels that were carried in the financial crisis, and there's a lot of unperforming loans out there. So you you, you have to be really careful with the euro. I think the euro is is as I mentioned yesterday. I think the dollar is at risk of continuing to rally and I think the euro is at risk of continuing a sell-off so uh, you know are we uh, does that mean the euro is going to break down right now no not necessarily I, I I'm not short I, I should have shorted it yesterday I knew I should have I was kind of half asleep when I was trading but what I'd really like to do uh, hold on really quick uh, what I'd like to do is uh, is is be a seller um, you know up at Oh, but 117 is what I'd like to do. I, that, that doesn't mean I'm going to get my opportunity. I'm just saying that if I if I could if I could trade it on the short side, whoops, uh, up there, that's what I'd rather do at this at this stage in the game. Uh, the cable does look weak. I mean, the, the cable uh, because we couldn't break this uh, uh, down sloping trend line. The risk was that we would move lower. And and if you read uh, the forex analytics, a basic technical analysis from yesterday, um, I think I said that as well. Um, a minor downtrend line is capping daily price action and keeping risk of a move back below 130 possible, which we trade, uh, which we trade below the 131.75. It should have said while, but you know, I'm I'm trying to type quick and write analysis, so sometimes I, uh, the typos are there. Anyway, um, we here we are slumping towards 130, and that was when we were yesterday when we were above uh, 131. Now the Aussie uh, also was at risk of breaking lower, and as you can see, we have broken lower yesterday uh, on Forex Analytics. If you read the analysis yesterday, said um, the daily uptrend line is holding for now, but a clean break of the 74 cent level um, uh, could put some downside pressure on the pair. And we broke through the 74 cent level, and you know, and it it, it sold off. Uh, that that happened in European trade. So. Uh, late in Asia, and 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 we're we're approaching channel support. I mean, we are in a, a channel in the Aussie, but with the weakness in gold, um, it doesn't. It's not. It shouldn't be too surprising that uh, that we're seeing the sell-off in in the Aussie. Kiwi, same thing. We had a triangle. Uh, we were testing the lower end of the triangle 
and we have broken broken lower. So uh, the Kiwi also, you have to also keep in mind with the Kiwi, we are trading below a really, really major multi-year trend line. I know I pointed that out yesterday, but it's 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 heavy. I, I you gotta be very careful about trading the uh, the the uh, the the Kiwi on the long side. By the way, the Bank of England um, uh, uh, press conference just ended just moments ago, and the cable obviously is on its lows. Which, you know, following the Bank of England, uh, they they actually raised rates as as expected, but uh, uh, Mark Carney uh, talked down the the cable, and that's you know what's Put the cable on its butt. Um, the dollar Canadian, we are attacking an, a downtrend line. So the dollar Canadian above 130.50 should be a pretty bullish event. It, 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 the Canadian's been kind of struggling. So um, I think what will help the dollar Canadian higher is going to be more risk aversion, if anything. And, and same with the the peso, which the peso is trying to make its its way higher, but we really got to break above that 1880 to to continue. Um, the Swissy, you know. I I was looking at the Swissy yesterday, and we have this like, you know, minor downtrend line. I'm I'm not not too not too hip on trading the the Swissy right now. I, I, it should be going higher for so many reasons, but at the same time, if if the market gets a little, you know, skittish, they they might run to Swiss francs because you don't have very many you don't have very many options when when you're like okay, you know, the poop the the proverbial poop hits the fan, you know, and and people get a little bit scared about the markets. What do you buy? I mean, we talked about this yesterday. What do you buy? I mean, you, you can't buy gold. It's so weak right now. Uh, you you know the the bond market has been, you know, uh, the bond market's been selling off. No one's buying bonds. You 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 definitely don't want to own stocks. So what do you buy? You know, do you buy you buy dollars and I guess you maybe you buy some Swiss francs too. I don't know, but I think that's one of the things that's supporting the dollar Swiss or the, excuse me, the Swiss franc right now is the lack of lack of uh, trades to take. Um, so um, so anyway, um, you know, just just some food for thought. Uh, here is the 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 Nordic currencies. The U.S. dollar, Norwegian krona is holding up really well. Same same with the Swedish krona, and. I'll tell you, I'm not long um, the dollar against any of these any of these Nordic currencies, but but man, uh, like I look at the U.S. dollar, Swedish krona, and this thing looks pretty damn bullish. I you know, I, I guess we can do this right here. Uh, let me get rid of this. Oh, watch my call it. You know, you look at the U.S. dollar, Swedish krona, and and, and the thing's just building. It's not it's not selling off. It's holding up really well. So if the dollar actually, you know, gains some strength, the, the risk could be to to really, you know, blast higher at some point. And and I'm like I said, I, I don't I don't own it, but I sure as hell wouldn't want to be shorted. So that's that's one thing that you know kind of keeps me thinking. Here's the dollar index. Dollar index is building a little bit of a wedge here. Um, you know, might be a wedge, might be. You know, we had that little false breakout over here, but it didn't produce any downside. And like I said yesterday, as long as we're and Dale, uh, you know, agreed with me, as long as we're above 94.20, there's no reason to be on the short side of the dollar. Not right now. Um, you know, uh, sh you know, as we enter a trade war, conventional wisdom would say that the dollar should strengthen in a trade war. Uh, I've read a lot of bank analysis, um, you know, because if, if you see my if you see my inbox and the analysis that I I have to read every day, or at least that gets thrown at me, not that I have to read, I I, I read through probably fifteen plus bank reports on just currencies alone. I'm not talking about you know stocks and all that other crap. Um, uh, some fixed income, but a lot, most of it's just on currencies. Um, m most banks agree at this point that the the dollar will be the beneficiary in a trade war. Now that doesn't mean that that the that America is going to be a beneficiary. That means that the dollar is going to be a beneficiary. As a matter of fact, I I think that if the dollar strengthens, that's um that's <laughs> that's a hindrance. To the U.S., not not a uh, not not a uh, not not a, a benefit, um, if because if you're trying to trying to entice a, a trade war, um, a, a stronger dollar is not going to help. A stronger currency is not going to help your 
uh, your 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 end goal. And I think that's that's the you know the problem is as we as we uh, you know induce this trade war that the dollar continues to strengthen to kind of offset some of this uh, you know some of the the tariffs that are flying around and whatnot. So anyway, just some food for thought there. Uh, crude oil uh, continues to be pretty weak. We're, we're approaching, and I'm going to go look at a couple other instruments before I turn it over to Andrea. Let me see if Andrea is here. And Dale might have uh, – oh, I don't see Andre yet. Um, let's see. Oh, he says he's here. Um, look, I'm going to bring Andre on here in one second. Hey, I'm Dale. Back. I'm back, okay. buddy. You want to find Andre really quick and um, bring him over to sure. the um, – uh, as in as a staff member, thank you. I just want to cover a couple other things really fast before I turn over to Andre. I always love looking at Andre's charts. I, I'm a I'm a big believer of harmonic patterns. Um, uh, I I think they're so hard to identify. Uh, that's why I love having Andre around to to be able to find the patterns for not only myself but the the forex analytics community. Andre, what name um, are you registered under? I, I typed in Andre. I don't see you. He, he might be trading jazz. Well, okay. Uh, let's see. What's the name of my cocker spaniel, jazz? No, uh, it, he, he, you can see him right here. It's uh, 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 a Pinto. Well, wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me see if I can find him really quick. Pinto. I got it. Go ahead. Okay, Andre's there. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I, like I said, I, I love I love seeing Andre's work because it, it's 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 harder for me to see harmonic patterns in the market. I, I can catch some of the the real basic ones, but but um, but Andre has you know uh, has such a great eye for for identifying you know all the you know potential setups. So uh, being able to visualize it in this fashion is just uh, to me it's you know it's worth its weight in gold. So, uh, but really quick, let me, let me just cover, okay, we got crude oil approaching a really key trend line support that comes in around 66 and a quarter. I would say, uh, I, I, I did agree with the Dale yesterday. I actually had to close out the pattern and play, uh, for gold. I think gold's trading heavy. Um, gold, I, I think is going to, to make a, an eventual move to this. This is a, uh, 618, but also an, a 786 retracement confluence, which will come in around 1175. So I think that is a very, very <laughs> strong possibility, um, you know, moving forward for, for gold, as long as gold stays below 1236 and silver, you know, as long as it's below 12 or uh, 1560, I think the risk of a move back towards, uh, towards 15, um, 14. If not, 14. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, 15 would be 120 percent oh. extension of this well, move here, but really, yeah, maybe even 114, 114 and a quarter. I think is is more of a realistic expectation for for silver. As much That's as I what don't, I'm looking for. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's it's all very possible. Um, you know, a lot of these relative strengths have have reset, and they've um, they've worked off their oversold conditions, which that's not good for 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 buyers you know once you once you work off those oversold conditions uh relative strength resets um you know another leg lower is now possible so anyway uh with that being said i'm sure sure andre has a lot of great looks for us so um, um i'll make him the presenter then sounds Hello, good everyone. i'm here already hey andre how are you uh, thank you for having me thank good you good to much. have you yeah. good to have you and uh and, you and, 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 and too. I, I know you. I know you. You always have great patterns for us, and I hope you've you've come to the table today in this very slow summer trading season that we're dealing with. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, you got some good setups for us. Not not so slow with indexes. You know, I think a lot of people are in the Hamptons, and uh, what a great time for bear raids when markets are thin, and it doesn't take as much volume to push them around. So, yeah. you know. Uh, August is a pretty important month in the market, Blake. Uh, I'm all, you know, before I had to wear diapers in August of 1982 was uh, the launch of the prolific bull market. And then we all remember 1987 and the high in 87 was actually made in August. And we went down for about four weeks and then recovered, put in a lower high before the October massacre. Oh, just a little history about August. 
not a great not a great deal and um well can can i can i jump yeah. on uh, go ahead. yeah jump so this is this can is you oil. talk about basketball we, or get over the volleyball no, I'm, I'm 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 too tired today to, to jump <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but uh, we can set up a we can set up a, the next week and then we can we can uh, uh, Okay. We can do, we can oh do yeah, them. you had to make a move. I know that's exhausting. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So this is this is oil, um, and we are facing now. I, I actually published it on Forex Analytics, so uh, we are now facing the 161.8 extension, the 80% retracement. This is the first level where I find for where I search for um, a bullish momentum. This is the completion point for. The bullish, uh, the bullish shark pattern. Um, it's it's an interesting confluence between between those two Fibonacci levels, um, and obviously failing um, to support the price there. We have the next one at 224 extension. So uh, at this point, I'm not so sure if if they will find a support there. We are again oversold, um, but still. Um, Still offering some bearish momentum on MACD, at least in my interpretation. So we can see more bearish momentum. But um, in terms of harmonic trading and the next ones, uh, actually we are facing one right now, and the 224 extension a few points below at 6636. Um, and because um, you have mentioned, let let me try to. Uh, to cover some some of those, actually, I, I enjoyed this this S and P edge and shoulder formation. I, I was I was already um, trying to figure out where 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 is the, the the neck zone and where is the 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 shoulders, where are the shoulders, and and we are now facing very close to 38 percent retracement from all this bullish momentum. So I believe a few points below. Um, I will not be surprised to to see uh, S and P finding support at this area, uh, and from here a new high or at least a retest at 618 uh, eventually, and that that will provide us um, an entry point for those for those who are trying to search for sell opportunities. Um, we can wow. we can wait for we can wait for the 618. Reinforcing this this right right shoulder formation, and um, well, we can we can at least this is my expectation. Then okay, can, so if that doesn't happen, new low. Because, hmm. Andre, if that doesn't yeah. happen, because you know we all have expectations. I stay away. I stay In away fact, from it. Um, yeah. You wouldn't sell a breakdown? No, not at all. With the okay. 200 meter average built right below, I, 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 yeah. I, I, it's it's not my thing <laughs> to try okay. to try if. If somehow I can try a reversal at those levels, I can try to identify uh, um, uh, an harmonic trading, yeah. uh, harmonic pattern below the 200 media average. Uh, let me try at 618. So if I if I can identify an harmonic yeah, below the 200 media average, eventually oversold conditions at 618 golden ratio. So I can try to identify a bullish momentum in order to let's. Let's say to retest the neck. Uh, how no? about how about is it possible instead of returning to those highs at twenty eight twenty five or so that we mm -hmm. just correct the break from twenty eight twenty five to today's low? Mm -hmm. Is there any harmonic that would give you a, a retrace? So to, to, to for a, a deeper a deeper pullback. No, it's, it's, thought from the sixty one eight that we sold off to to oh. today. Mm -hmm. uh, could we get some type of fib retracement of this last wave before we fail? Well, if 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 I take a look at, on a daily uh, chart, we are we are as as Dale as uh, Blake has mentioned, we are trading at 88% uh, retracement. So, based on this specific time frame, I can assume the price needs to pull back. Uh, well, let me try a 38% retracement. And this is this is also a pattern um, that I was um, trying to identify earlier. I, I was not expecting the price to 
takes so, so much time to achieve that 88% retracement. Actually, I was expecting that pattern below at this double, right. at this double, um, uh, double bottom. So we are now trading at a 88% retracement. Obviously, the market has failed to achieve that harmonious behavior. Uh, so it 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 failed. It has failed to print the harmonic pattern. But it somehow it has reached those levels. So we are trading at 88% retracement. Those are the criteria or the ratios uh, for the bearish bat pattern. Um, and I, I will not be surprised to see a violation of these heads and shoulder, uh, fast violation, and trying to search for the 38% retracement below. 200 media hybrids also approaching. And uh, and from here, decisions needs to be to 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 take to to take some decisions from here. So a, a pullback or a trend, a bearish trend continuation, not trend continuation, but a reversal, deeper a deeper pullback at least. Okay. Um, but at least the 38% retracement, based on on a daily time frame, I will not be surprised to see S&P trading at those levels, searching for the 200 meter average, let's say on a daily time frame. We was we we were checking the four hours time frame, the head and shoulder information. Let me try to get some synchronization here. So this is a 38% retracement there. We can try to identify some some confluence between fibs there. So I have the 78% retracement there. I have no uh, I have no harmonic. Um, projections based on the most recent price action. So I need at least, let's say, a 38% retracement here. A pullback, as I'm expecting for the formation of the right shoulder, and then the 88% retracement. I'm not sure why I'm not being able to to print that pattern. So, but oh, okay. let's say let's say I I need a pullback into this golden right. fib. Um, and then obviously it, it will take some time, um, and then the 88% retracement will print okay. the, the bullish bat pattern. Can I um, make a uh, selfish request? Of course. I'm curious, I'm curious if uh, with gold and silver being mm -hmm. where they're at, if mm -hmm. there are any harmonic patterns that are saying we're close to terminating this decline. There's there's one that I've published, I believe. Let me try to check for X analytics. Thank you for letting me be selfish. No, no problem at all. I only think about myself. <laughs> how about you? <laughs> oh, I told it. I can't ask you how you, <laughs> if you think about yourself, because I only think about me. Why would I ask you? All right. So, uh, <laughs> what do you got, buddy? No, we have we have we have um, a bullish uh, a bullish alt bat pattern printed at 113 extension. So we are now facing this fib level, um, which I'm not so sure if it will it will hold. What's the next one um, underneath it? The Under next the one will yeah. will will. I need the, the next one based on this 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 price action. It's at 161.8, so it's a crap oh. pattern. It's some somewhere below 11.56. Wow. Oh wow! Um, okay. I'm not. Let me try to get some some confluence there. That'll make a lot of gold bulls pretty crabby too. Well, I. I, I the crab pattern. Me, yeah, let let me let me be <laughs> honest with you, Dale. I was not I was not expecting uh, um, gold to fall from 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 this major bullish uh, structure. Yeah. The price the price was was printing. We are now a few points below that trend line. I will not be surprised to see a bounce from from there. But again, we are we are trading. I, I only trade based on specific Fibonacci levels. I, I don't care what what comes next. Uh, I just uh -huh. need to define my my risk and my limits and and let the trade goes uh, okay. goes on. So, but thank you. Based, based on this, I, these are my expectations. Actually, I'm involved in in in, in dollar uh, on with with gold. I'm sorry. 
with a small with a small position uh, obviously i'm suffering uh, at i'm at negative at this moment because my entry point was at 113 extension a few points a few points above the 113 extension um where is it invalidated the, the pattern will invalidate with the new low so i i set my stops right below it and it's based and it's based on on the reward that i was expecting so let's say i was expecting um, the 113 extension to bounce and to four four percent a bounce a movement of four percent on price. So I, I set my limits based on most most of the times I use the reward that I was that I'm expecting because I trade the pattern and the mm -hmm. pattern offers me a, 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 a higher probability to achieve specific Fibonacci levels. So I need to base and to support my targets based on on those feeds, and I, I I don't want to lose more than than I want that I'm expecting to win. So it makes no sense to use a, a stop loss, um, a huge a, a huge stop loss, no, because I'm I'm only expecting to to win four percent on price. It makes no sense to use um, a situation like this because I, I trade by repetition, so I repeat the process over and over and over again. And if I repeat this process over and over again, obviously I will lose money, uh, even if somehow yeah. I win some trades. That's money so, management. Yeah, money it, money management manage, money management is also um, one of my advices for those who are who are starting to trade. And let me let me take the take the advantage to to thank Blake uh, on on those advices because actually following someone some sometimes it's not the best um, the best approach or, or, or following following specific specific trades for from from someone is not is not um, sometimes the best we can do when we are trying to learn how to trade uh, because we need to understand the concepts Blake was was uh, mentioning also, so we need to to embrace all those um, those strategies, risk limits, and and and, and criteria, and 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 the pattern you are trading. If you trade flags, if you are trading triangles, if you trade um, wedges, or if you if you are trading the three drives pattern, uh, or you are trading harmonic harmonic trading. So you 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 search for specific specific criteria, and you apply. A, 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 a risk strategy to 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 repeat over over the over the time. So let me just um, try to cover some of those um, charts you mentioned before: euro versus uh, pounds. Um, actually, uh, another another chart uh, published uh, inside Forex Analytics platform. So. For those who are who are following, um, you are already synced with with those behaviors. So um, we have we have this internal shark pattern at 161.8 extension. It's very similar with with others. Uh, actually, dollar versus yen has printed exactly the same the same pattern. Um, Euro versus yen, New dollar, uh, New Zealand versus yen, or almost all the yens. Uh, yen pairs uh, printed the same the same price behavior. You can see for those who are subscribing um, for X analytics. Let me try to, to recover this page because my browser is extremely heavy at this moment. Let me try to push that that chart for those who are for those who are not following uh, for X analytics because those who are following are already benefiting from 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 all those um, capabilities inside our platform. So. This is this is how I trade, and this is how I provide my my or my clients and our subscribers inside the Forex Analytics. So I, I try to identify the next um, the next and eventual uh, pattern, uh, harmonic pattern, and then we just need to wait for we just need to wait for the completion point of that that pattern. For those who are following um, and trading the markets on a daily basis. Um, you just need to to wait for those prices to reach those prices, and then you need to try to take advantage from those. Um, they will not. They will not. Um, uh, well, they are not 100% granted, obviously. 
um, but based on the, the risk limits and let's say the reward and the, the, the risk reward that we are applying trading those harmonics uh, in a long term approach, uh, it's obviously um, it's obviously a very interesting way to, to, to approach the market. But uh, just to say, all those EN pairs are facing the same the same FIB level at those at those levels at, at this moment. Some of them um, printing deeper pullbacks. Uh, let me try to check this cable, and and some of them uh, failed just by a few points. Um, those those default criteria. Actually, we are trading the 60, the 161 extension, the reversal extension, um, and that was the the, um, the fee level that I was expecting the price to reverse, similar as on dollar. Um, but well, and because Dale and because Blake has mentioned it also, Mexican. Um, on a daily time frame, I'm, I was expecting, and I still um, expecting uh, until the price violates the, the the structure. So I need to wait for the price to to validate or not, or to invalidate the probability to print this 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 pattern. It's very similar as a five O pattern, um, but it's it's a very simple uh, behavior. So we identify one first movement and the pullback and then we extend that at uh, 161.8 so we extend the first movement at 161.8 and if somehow the price starts to pull back in the fast mode and as soon as the price violates that that previous structure support we search for the 200 extension from this swing 200 extension from that swing will put the price above um, this bullish or ascending structure trend line acting as a support will trade a few points. Actually, we'll put the price nailing the the previous the previous support. Uh, and this is my um, this is what I'm waiting for to see. This Mexican. is your preferred count yeah. here. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm waiting for the price to achieve those levels. Um, I'm not sure if if I have something. Uh, we have we have a well, few Adam's of here. those. Adam mm -hmm. is here now. Yeah, yeah. So okay. uh, I, I need to to get out from from our charts now. Uh, I will be here tomorrow. Um, also, also, if somehow. Oh, great, buddy. Um, you need to 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 ask something else tomorrow. You can we can follow up there. Okay. Love your work, Andre. Okay. Thank you for making thank you, time. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. No problem. Thank you. All right, good hunting, bro. And Adam, I see you. I see you. I'm going to make you the presenter. Happy August to you, buddy. How are you, Adam Button? Hello, Dale. Hi, Adam. How are you, buddy? Okay, good. I'm doing well. Good. See one of those screens there? What are we seeing? Uh, window. Uh, now you got your charts up. Okay. So okay. There we go. All your charts. So, uh, thanks for coming back. Thanks for coming back, buddy. How's that? There we go. Hey, Dale. Oh, uh, there, what an what an entrance. <laughs> Paul, <can I> go? <laughs> How are you, Adam? Good, good. Uh, yeah, can't complain. Volatile markets. Uh, yeah, tough to make sense of trade always, but uh, fun trying anyway. Yeah, a lot of people uh, went away and. Um, uh, and they went away, and before they left, they defriended Facebook. Yeah, well, 20% <laughs> of Twitter is even worse, right? And, yeah, so uh, I, I know last month uh, the seasonals were more were negative for uh, S&Ps. It took till the end of the month for them to kick in. Did the seasonals say anything about stock indexes in August? Uh, what's the pattern there, buddy? I mean, August is a poor month. I mean, July... <laughs> I, I'm not sure how negative they were. I mean, it's generally a pretty good month. June's a tough one. Um, oh, and that, okay. That kind of played out. It might have been a while since we've spoken, but um, the uh, August is a, is a tougher month, especially Germany and Japan. The indexes there are especially vulnerable. They're, they're two of the worst months uh, for those indexes. And if you look at trade, well, it, it might make a lot of sense. Uh, those worries aren't going away now with 
with Trump ramping up talk on on tariffs, and we saw China was was pretty weak overnight uh, today. Yeah, so I uh, see so you have a lot of, uh, it looks like, uh, do you have weekly charts up here or daily charts up here? So, what, you know, we had yeah. a lot of central bank, we had a lot of central bank action here this week, Adam. Um, what do you make out of the BOJ's uh, actions and how uh, short-term yields are still very low, but it's not how low they were, it's how fast they went up. And if it's starting to look like, uh, we're starting to get some uh, continuity in global central banks where people are, all central banks are either considering or withdrawing liquidity from the markets. Right. With the Bank of Japan, I mean, it's just a different set of rules there. I mean, a one basis point move in the Japanese tenure is like a huge move where anywhere else is background noise. Um, they're trying to control the entire yield curve. But the pro problem they've run into is is their QE measures um, they're they're running out of ammunition they're buying ETFs um, in the Nikkei and and they can they're worried that if they keep buying at this pace um, it, it is going to affect the market and so they're they're trying to find ways to keep these plans in place without buying up the entire market you know when they introduced all these things they assumed it would be you know one or two or three year um, operation and you know now it looks like it, it's going to go on forever and uh, you know one of the things that people miss about the BOJ was they downgraded their inflation assessment in the latest um, meeting and and really what they're they're doing is trying to add some sustainability without really being more hawkish so I'd say they're more of an outlier and, and the Swiss National Bank is more of an outlier uh, whereas you have Carney today hiking you know Canada's hiking the Fed's obviously hiking um, even the ECB is is slowly tiptoeing towards hiking this time next year so uh you know you're right that the we're in a, this mode right now where rates are slowly going up or or at least there's a more of a hawkish slant to everything but there, there are certainly some you know even if you look at australia and new zealand that don't seem to be going anywhere fast and, and you see it in the australian dollar yeah uh, because of china weakness i wanted to ask you uh, do you think most Market participants were surprised by negative action in the pound on a hike, Adam. Uh, you know, the market was pricing it in, maybe not 100%. That's what the talk I was hearing. But it got the bullish news it, it wanted and it sold off. Is Brexit overshadowing any central, any BOV, BOV action? Is that the reason? Yeah, this, it was no. one of those ones. You know, a lot of the commentary ahead of time was saying, "Well, they're not going to, they're not going to hike." We don't believe it's 90%, and then they went yeah. and hiked, and and you see, that's a daily cable chart there, right. and it's it, down. I mean, we're a little bit off the lows. Um, it kind of, it was all counterintuitive. All about, I mean, it was a nine nine zero vote as well, which is a surprise. You know, you thought at most it would be something like seven to two, um, but it came with this, this bit of a dovish message. But it was it was skewed at first. Carney was talking about R star, which is the neutral kind of rate, and he talked about two to three percent. And then you think, wow, they're going to raise it two to three percent. Then he came out in the press conference and said, well, there's all these other factors that are holding it down. You know, we have to get rid of the uncertainty, the Brexit. We have to get rid of uh, low productivity um, and investment. And then, then you know, maybe we'll get up to two three percent. And say, okay, well, we're we're really not on a path at two or three percent. We're probably not going to hike for a while. And I think you just have a lot of these cable bears waiting in the weeds and and they're there and they're just relentless um, because the Brexit it, it, we're not really getting any closer to, to some sort of reasonable solution so I think the thinking is it's going to get worse and and cables lower so um, you know I, it, it comes as a bit of a surprise but that Carney would you know be a little bit dovish he's been hawkish for so long right and then he finally gets to raise rates and now I think he just wants to declare victory and get away from this hawkish stance, which has has tripped him up so many times. And, so he's uh, you know, probably now, ha you think he's happy with the lower pound, with all the you know uh, trade friction that's there, making uh, the UK more competitive to export. I, I think the guy he's just really struggled to understand what's what's going on in the global economy for a long time. I think he doesn't understand some of the deflationary global factors that are that are there, and he continues to see. You know, if he's talking about the UK's operating, how does he keep? How does he keep getting hired? 
when guys like yeah, you and good me, luck. Good luck. you know, when good guys luck. like, huh, really? I mean, guys like you and me know this, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, well, yeah good. I mean, he's a confident guy, you know, there's a reputation. I mean, in Canada, he didn't do so It's so not well, what you, you know, it's right? who you know, right? Yeah, exactly. And I mean, he was coming into a Bank of England that was a mess. They they really yeah. did need someone from the outside. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if you look at the chart now, it's interesting. Uh, you're, you're at these lows and Trying to come off. You know, but there is there's a support down but 130 just below 130. So if it can find a way to base there. But if you if you zoom it out, like it's a. It really is. It's starting to look more like a blip, especially if it gets back down. I mean, these are some really key support levels. Now we're back testing them again. It looked like yeah, we've come off have, a couple times. I bet you have some fibs from the lows of, you know, 140, yeah, they'd be, they'd be right 144. Right Looks like about halfway back and pretty important pivot. Good eye, Adam. You're hired. Yeah, I mean, like it's right all in there, 128 or 120, yeah. 130, 129. I mean, you kind of yeah. really got to hold these levels or you're going right back down and it's easy to make a case for it going lower and it's easy to make a case for the US dollar going higher. I mean, it's it it's getting better in America. I mean, housing's a bit of a headwind. Um, it's not making a lot of sense, the weakness there, but um, the Fed certainly has got to be feeling pretty good after the latest GDP report and after some of the data, it's, it's solid. Yeah, Paul, uh, uh, I think uh, even stress that they're independent after um, President Trump uh, made a statement about not liking higher interest rates. So uh, Paul is kind of have to flex his muscles a little bit here to push back on uh, the guy who hired him. Well, that's kind of the thing, right? You hear that the Fed, you know, hawks, doves, whatever, they're all fiercely independent. I mean, they all, they come together when there's that outside political pressure and you could see a case where they hike just to show, right. you know, they had to, yeah. you know, what I guess it would be twice more this year in September and December just to say, listen, we're independent, um, yeah. we're hawks, the numbers are good, and leave us alone. And I mean, it's not going to make Trump stop saying it, but I think um, they really, they really, really value that. And I don't think they, I think, you know, Powell would rather be fired than appear to have been bullied. Right. But I mean, really, how independent are any of these guys? They're all on the government payroll. Yeah, I think. You know, I mean, I mean independent it, it, independent to me, Adam, means some guy going out and taking a risk and buying something like taking over Forex Live and turning it into a success. Or a guy like Blake Morrow leaving Wise Trade and starting his own deal with a couple of good partners and making a go of it. So how that's independent. Uh, so really, how independent is it? What's on the top of the check that Powell gets every two weeks? Yeah, or I mean, it's it's either there's that was that bias there, whether it's, you know, it's funny you talk about housing with people, especially in a place like Canada where it got really out of hand. And it's funny how the people who own houses tend to think it, it's still going up and the people who don't think it's going down. You know, and it's not that these people aren't trying to be objective. It's that, that uh, you're you know, once, you're, once you, yeah. you've chosen a team, you tend to yeah. want your Talk team. your book. Yeah. Talk your book. I, I'm getting a question from uh, Jacques. I uh, would love to hear your thoughts on the SMB. Uh, what's going on there in the Swiss? I, I think, I mean, there's nothing really going on at the SMB. They, they, they won't raise if the ECB raises. I mean, we try to get back up to the 120 in Euro Swiss. Um, pull that up. <clears throat> no, I, I've, been, I've been short. Um, on the dollar Swiss it, 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 from time to time over the last couple months. And and I think there could be something there on trade fears, but I think you're, it's just locked into this safe haven kind of um, mode. And, you know, Euro Swiss, it just, it look, keeps looking like that. That's it there on the daily chart. It keeps looking like it wants to get up to 120 and it touched off of 120, did a nice job there. And then now it's kind of back down and, and, uh, and it there's just too many yeah i wouldn't be sure uncertainty and even with the ecb kind of hiking well i think the market wants to see a little bit more before it pushes it back above 120. you have to give people a reason to take their money out of switzerland 
And uh, I think you need something well, a little bit better than, than what European growth is now. All right, but being charged interest to hold your deposits are still negative yeah. interest rates there. Isn't that a good reason? Yeah, I mean, I, you would think so, For but I, uh, <laughs> if you were willing to pay, pay in the get go, I, I don't, you know, yeah. it, it speaks to a lot of the illegal money yeah. out there. Yeah, I think that's right. Laundering. Yeah, um, so would, yeah, right. So if you're laundering money, you don't care about yield, do you? You just yeah, I think I think one of the things. Now, I hear stories about like the people want accounts that absolutely don't make money because if you get paid a little bit of interest, they can actually get you on not claiming the interest on the illegal money. So they would rather have zero yield than a little bit of yield. I mean, losing and losing. I guess oh, nobody, well, nobody wants that, could, but you could buy Bitcoin. I want to get back to your home country, buddy. So, uh, well, what are you guys uh, saying about America here and? Uh, uh, with what's going on, do you think uh, they'll be able to negotiate, uh, renegotiate NAFTA with Canada? There's talk that we're getting closer with Mexico, and Canada's pulled back a bit, but looks like it's in a an interesting zone that this may end up being a nice break to buy. Yeah, you know, I'd agree with. I mean, by the Canadian dollar, dollar CAD, you know, with, throughout this negotiation. You've had all these false signals that it was about to get done. And I think everybody's been burned a few times by thinking, okay, this is going to happen now. We made a little bluster and now we're going to have a deal. In the end of May, it really looked close. Everyone from Canada was saying this is about to get done. Um, and then the tariffs went in on steel on June 1st. And now then it looked like it was going to be a long haul. But now once again, I mean, all the signs, all the headlines are pointing to a deal you know even within the next week or so and you have a market that's extremely reluctant to to buy into that and i'm starting to think a deal is getting done i mean it's been not just u.s officials lately it's been canadians it's been mexicans canada was kind of sidelined but i think the market misread that it was just america and mexico trying to hammer out a few things between them on autos and once that's done there are a couple real contentious issues and one headline to watch for is there's a big fight Right over a sunset clause that White House wanted this clause that it would just end every five years unless everyone renewed it in Mexico and Canada said listen if our companies or your companies or any companies are going to build a factory in a foreign country you know they're not planning for five years you know they, they need to have some certainty over a little bit of a longer period and and I think ultimately America will come down on that but that's probably the headline that tells you that the deal is done rather than them saying the deal is done if they can make some progress on that because uh, people have really dug their heels in on it. And I think there's a lot of upside here in the Canadian dollar. Canadian GDP this week was was very strong. I mean, it was broadly strong. Um, you know, year over year, even it's 2.6%. I think the Canadian story is underappreciated. The commodity story is doing a lot better in Canada than than even I thought. You know, there, there are a lot of regulatory problems and, and so on and so forth. But in most countries, it's, it's tough to extract commodities without running into trouble. Um, and so I think there's a pretty good case for the Canadian dollar here um, um, and buy a dollar CAD or, or probably something like CAD yen will shape up a little bit better okay. in the medium term. And uh, shifting gears over to the yuan, uh, Chinese using that as a way to, um, you know, kind of ameliorate some of the effects from tariffs. Uh, you know, to me, it's had a tremendous run. It could correct, but to me, the wave doesn't look like this is going to be it. And I would favor buying a good, you know, fib retracement in USD one. Where's your head at on that? Yeah, well, I think you got to. I mean, if you remember back three years ago in August, that's when the yuan story kind of blew up. Yes. You had this massive I do remember. That was a real kind of out of the blue thing, and it might not have just been yuan, but sometimes things can come together in a quiet month like August, and really little jitters blow up. There's not a lot of liquidity, and this this could very well be the same kind of thing. Uh, I mean, you had the Chinese stock market, like I said, down overnight. Trump talking about 25% tariffs. You know, I think there's you, you when you look at China, you always have this belief that there's kind of a man behind the curtain pulling the strings and to some extent that's true but there's it's also a real market 
and there is capital flight. And you know, you, you have so much more money trying to leave China than really wants to stay there, as you'd imagine in any kind of controlled economy where they get confiscated everything you have. And you know, it, talk of a trade war which is just accelerating that. I mean, it's pretty remarkable that after you know we changed just yesterday talking about 25% tariffs instead of 10% tariffs. I mean, if this comes to happen, it's it's devastating and. And you know we talk about China manipulating the currency, but if you were to say, you know, Canada, America is going to put 25% tariffs on on Mexico or Canada, I mean, the currency would implode. Um, right. And and you you know you wouldn't really call that manipulation. It, it, certainly, it would it would help Canada bounce back, but that's just the way it is when you threaten tariffs. So I, I don't I don't see China really bowing on the currency, uh, especially as it as it's helping them. Um, you know, compete a little bit better, and and I think you know, I mean, when, as as optimistic as I am on NAFTA, it doesn't seem to be getting like like how many things have to happen before China and the U.S. make some kind of new trade agreement, uh, or or, or just ease up on this. Uh, you know, the the market is is genuinely underpricing a risk here. I think yeah. Trump like wants a fight, and, and yeah. You know, I saw a guy from the Peterson um, outfit, uh, you know, you could tell a very seasoned guy, and uh, he talks about how much damage can be done, and then once the damage is done, it's not so easily undone, like if jobs are lost over this in, in certain sectors. So uh, he's hoping that the bluff pays off, but... Um, uh, he was a little skeptical of the 4.1 GDP print. Are you? Ah, I'm less skeptical than I've probably been in 10 years about the U.S. economy. Um, okay. You know, the numbers, it's tough to be to be bullish, to be optimistic. Um, but, it, it, I mean, and the deficit is a real problem, but you've essentially bought growth with bigger deficits. And uh, you know that that will eventually undo, and and it's a long-term headwind. But you have genuine growth, I think, right now. I mean, how hard is it to get a job in America now? It's it's tough to get a good-paying job, but there is work. And uh, you know, you're tightening up on illegal immigration. That's a bit of a a tailwind. Now, does it mean that rates are going or need to move up, or that inflation's coming? I still think no. I mean, we're in a deflationary global world with automation and, so and one, last, time, last time you're on Adam and I said gold you said yeah it hurts when you drop it on your foot so great call it continues to slide any chance for these metals to recover here or do we yeah, need well, I, mean, I, I, go, I like gold a bit more, more this month it's the seasonals are better I mean that's not a pretty picture there there is a little bit of support down you can see at the July yeah. low yeah I haven't um, taken it out yet yeah, the seasonals are better. Um, the dollar can get caught in the, in the trade war headwinds. I think you can just have a nice, easy bounce back up to, to you know the lows from uh, from the start of the year or, or the end of last 1280, year. Twelve eighty, twelve eighty or so. Twelve eighty. You probably run through it as well to thirteen hundred. Yeah. Okay, um, that's a big trade. Oil, oil, like the last half of the year is weak for oil, so that might come okay. down as well. You know, I wanted to I, I wanted to ask you something because you you can't ignore it, and I'm not talking a, about you know being pro or against anything, but you know the midterms are going. I think it's going to shift from a lot of economic. We'll have all this you know trade war. Fed, it's the Fed's fault. It's you know Trump's fault. Th that war going on, uh, but the midterms are pretty critical for. Uh, possibly even the tenure of President Trump. And uh, I think that the market's going to shift from paying attention to a lot of uh, normal economic fundamentals that you and I eyeball all the time to being worried about whether the Democrats can take the House or not. And if this was a Trump rally, and... Um, a lot of people are saying that if the if Pelosi is speaker, uh, there will be a move towards impeachment. Um, so the market's going to worry about this. If America, if 
uh, traders believe the market is good because of Trump policies of deregulation, tax cuts, aren't they going to be worried about uh, his tenure being threatened if the Democrats control the House? I think it's it's still a long shot. So you're, I don't think the market's that worried about it, but you're you're right. I, and it's not just you know a lot of times it's not just the the policies themselves, but you, know, you have a president that is volatile. Oh. And if you were to have Democrats in the House, I think you would have you have this insanely polarized system, right? Yeah. And if you were to add, you know, change the levers of power and then have someone say no to Trump, and then you have a probably even more volatile president. And you know, and, and especially if you were to see kind of power slipping away, it see that as a as a something harking, har, you know, the next presidential election. So it might push things to more. More, more extremes, um, and and I think, it, think it's that would be the in? first thing to price in. It, it's just this okay. this obstructionism, this lack of cooperation. You know, you have a higher risk of these government shutdowns. You have, you know, more inflammatory rhetoric. You have to push to the extremes. So and, maybe that's beginning to be uh, priced in now. It's not just tr tariffs, because uh, uh, what I was thinking was. Um, for a long time, I had David Brady on, and he showed all these statements that the Fed made about Trump policies that were pretty anti-Trump policies. And then for the first time since he's been president and appointed Paul, he finally made a comment about not liking higher interest rates, Adam. And don't you think he knows even smarter guys than you and me, like, you know, Carol Icahn and some people that might have his ear say, you know what, the stock market might take a hit here. And uh, yeah, well, for him himself, he's playing with uh, house money here. And and I think, yeah. you know, part of this reversal on trade is you, you have ultimately a system that's controlled by donors. Right. And you, you hear these Koch brothers and, and others. And I think they're saying to some congressional candidates like, you know, we, we've been funding you for all these years. We're free trade guys and we yeah. don't want a trade war. So you better put this to bed or, you know, I'm not going to write another check. Um, and I think the Democrats are getting a lot of the same money, and obviously they're they're willing to stand up for it as well. So, you know, I you think there's a lot. It's really the president's on his own with a few people, you know, directly around him, Lighthizer and, and Navarro, that are that are pushing some of this. And a lot of Congress would love to see it go away, because I think they a lot of people running for Congress would feel a little more secure if there was no trade war ongoing. Now, Trump himself seems to think it helps him, fires up his base, and, and that's probably true. I mean, his instincts have been incredible. But uh, that if it if it results in, in something like losing the House, then then that equation starts to change. Um, right. And so ultimately, they, that could be good. You know, that's the thing about politics is there's always a lot more worry than in reality – there are, are troubles, right? You know, you look at the Italian election, the French election, the, yeah. really almost any election that you've had, you, know, you wait till the worries flare up and then you buy. And it, it, I think it works over and over again. I can't even think of a, a single better trade than fading political fear because the worries are never as bad. Although you could probably argue Turkey right now that, that selling on Turkey on, on the latest votes would have been a pretty good idea. But at least I, in the developed world, um, I heard you know, uh, Erdogan has hired so every relative for a government position. That yeah, that's a pretty big red flag. His gardener is a secretary of agriculture now. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Adam, great interview, buddy. Uh, you know, what's the best way for people to follow you? Uh, I see you just <laughs> finally followed me on Twitter with your Twitter account. And you have an Adam really Button. Really Adam and the best Button. way is <laughs> you be hard. The best way is at Forex Live. I'm, I'm okay. at FX underscore button, but I really just use Forex yeah. Live, so I, you know, I occasionally will tweet from my own account. But that's it's usually um, just me having a little more fun than I'm willing to have on the Forex Live account. Um, but yeah, we're at ForexLive.com. We didn't talk about seasonals too much. It's start of a new month. August seasonal is very strong. We got a little bit of a package in the in the must read section on the right side of our, our web page there about what's uh, what, what are the seasonal drivers in August. I think your readers might like to check that. It's a quick read. What, and, well, what's uh, the best trade you know, for August? Have, so uh, let me be selfish. What's your strongest seasonal trade in August? Yeah, I, I think Australian dollar is, is a very weak month. And, 
Nagus. Okay. And um, you know, it, it hasn't been able to get off the floor. The China worries weigh on the Australian dollar. Uh, technically, it's it's you know the, there's the, been plenty of reasons for it to make a move lately, and it, it can't get going. Uh, so that would be short Aussie um, is one of them. But I have a few more there, so so hopefully your readers can, can okay. check that out. And you're also uh, you know uh, associated with Ashraf Alati. What do you do at Alati? You guys collaborate <laughs> on on trades. What's your role there with Ashraf? Yeah, I mean I support him in, in kind of doing analysis and um, okay. you know, he he has trading signals and and um, they, I mean I just find. I mean, I've known Ashraf for more than 10 years, and it's just a great well, analyst. And you both have the same birthday. We, yeah, we, we yeah, sure. Hey, so, I mean, it was providential, sure. right? You're born under the same star. Um, I don't know, maybe that means that we a, think he, the same way. Maybe that means there's something to astrology. You're, uh, he's about your age, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. Adam, so uh, we could find you there too, collaborating with Ashraf. Uh, tell Ashraf he's got an open invitation to come in here anytime he'd like. And I want to thank you. Uh, you're one of my favorite guys to interview, Adam. You're definitely a pro. Yeah, likewise. Uh, I, I really me. enjoy and learn from you every day. Every time we have an interview, everyone thank Adam Button at Forex underscore Button at Forex Live at Alati. Uh, go and check out his August seasonals. That should be part of your intelligence gathering every month to check out what the tendencies of markets are during the particular month we're trading in. So that's Thursday for us, everyone. Don't just count your pips, count your blessings, and we'll wrap it up TGIF tomorrow. Thank you very much, Adam Button, my trading warrior brother. Good hunting. Thanks, Dale. All right, buddy.